question 10. So we have a long straight vertical wire carrying current in the upward direction. And wire passes through the center of the card. From the top view, draw four lines to represent the magnetic field. So we use the right hand grip rule, right? The thumb is pointing out of the paper. Your fingers are curling counterclockwise. But uh, just some tips for you. Lah. Number one, the feel is stronger when closer. So your circles, number one, should be concentric. Okay, they should be concentric. Number two, their separation is important. So, of course, the way you draw and the way I will draw is very different. I'm drawing it on one note. So, when it's close to the wire, the separation is close. But as you travel further and further away from the wire, the separation will be further. So, maybe something like this. And... Something like this. So as you travel further and further away from the wire, it will be something like this. Concentric circle where the separation is gradually bigger and bigger. Three marks. So I think oh, this paper, a lot of draw, draw, which is very good. Okay, and also don't forget to mark the direction. Direction is counterclockwise. Generally, you draw one enough that one. I'm also not a very like hardworking student. If I want to draw all, I just draw in one direction. Okay, I can already. Next. Okay. Of course, you want you can label every circle. La. But you draw one arrow is good enough, really. Make sure you draw I say arrows. Fine, draw a few. La. Okay, separation increasing, concentric circles. Concentric here means it has a common center. Same center. Three marks. Yay, so easy, right? Remember the transformer? We write, 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 also three marks. This one is just three marks. Very good. Okay, two wires, same direction. This is a very familiar setup. It's a classic example. Why a magnetic force is exerted on each wire? Well, in this case, um, we can say that there's a current in the wire. Current in each wire creates a magnetic whoa what is this creates a magnetic field at the neighboring or at the other wire okay then the current in the other wire is 90 degree to the magnetic field. Think about the condition for magnetic force to act on your wire. F is equal to BIL sine theta, right? So it should not be parallel. This is even better. It's 90 degree because you imagine that there's another wire here. Let's say there's another wire here. This wire current is going into the paper, but the magnetic field is parallel to the paper. So it's 90 degrees. Very good. Okay, so you need to settle the angle. Obviously, there's length, there's current, there's magnetic field. Lah. So the current in each wire creates a magnetic field at the other wire. This is your B. Okay, current in the other wire. This is your I. 90 degree to the magnetic field. This is your theta. The fact that we have a wire, of course, we have a length, la, so we don't have to talk about it anymore. And then, so we can just say 90 degree to the wire. Hence, a force X on this wire. And vice versa. Same thing for the other wire. Or And same thing for the other wire. Okay? If you're not comfortable with the term, vice versa. Okay. The reason why it has increasing separation, addressing a question from the chat, is that it is stronger when it's closer to the wire. 
right? The feel here is stronger than the feel here. So closer separation, closer lines, strong magnetic flux density. Further lines, here to here is further, weak magnetic flux density. Are you satisfied? Are you okay with the lines, the separation? Okay. In this case, another question would be, can I use Fleming's left hand? Um, you can, but you need to explain how you can apply Fleming's left hand, meaning you have to outline outline uh, that there is a current, there's a magnetic field, and the current and magnetic field is in a 90 degree angle. So you use Fleming's left hand alone cannot. But if you write about how you use Fleming's left hand, you will cover all these points. All right. So talk about Fleming's left hand, then you say there's a current. In, you Basically, you repeat all these things, and then according to Fleming's left hand, the force will act to the left or to the right. But the direction of these forces right now, because they're in the same direction, and if you use your Fleming's left hand correctly, this force is to, they are attractive towards the other wire. So I'm pretty sure uh, this is also in the lecture recording. We use Fleming's left hand and we find that they are attractive. Lah. Also Newton's third law. Mah. You pull me, I pull you back. No? Same direction, current direction of the current the same, they are attractive. Direction of the current is different. They are repulsive. Why? Because of Fleming's left hand. So go and watch the video or draw and use your Fleming's left hand. If like this, like this, then they repel. The force is repulsive. Okay, this force is attractive. All right. Next. Last part, part C. The current in the two wires are not equal. Explain whether the magnetic force are equal in magnitude. Ah, oh, yeah, I just explained. Newton's third law. Okay. So... You can say both forces. No oh, handwriting. Are Newton's third law pairs. Hence, they are equal in magnitude. Okay. So that's it. This is a pretty standard question. Sometimes they will ask you to calculate the force. So go and look up the past year questions that need you to calculate the force between the wires. But that's it for this one.